you ever want to change your pinned mission, check the Academy to see what's available. So, where's our special guest, the Hot Wheels expert? <laughs> Haven't figured it out yet, have you? Get in! Just look at this place. It's like a childhood dream come true. I thought I'd bring along a few friends who wanted to show off their Hot Wheels inspired cars. So, I've got some fact sheets here. You get to learn along with the audience. I'll just hit the record button and... Stick with me, kid. The biggest Hot Wheels expert on Earth is about to take you to school. It all started with Elliot Handler, who saw the toy cars his son played with and thought to himself, I could make something better. You see, right from the very beginning, Elliot envisioned a toy car that looked cool and rolled fast, making it that much more fun to play with. At the time, there was nothing out there like that. Handler brought in former rocket engineer Jack Ryan and General Motors car designer Harry Bradley to help. And between them, they made the first 16 cars, known as the original 16. Jack's team developed the stainless steel axles and Delrin hubs that allowed the cars to roll super fast, while Harry made them look super eye-catching. Harry and Jack's contributions became the pillars of Hot Wheels, performance and design. The first car off the production line was a custom Camaro. A lot like the one you're driving right now. Ah, I see what you did there. Yeah. And another of the original 16 was the custom at Fleetside, based on Harry's custom Chevy El Camino. Most of those early designs were inspired by hot rods and muscle cars, which were popular in California car culture at the time. After Harry Bradley, more designers joined the team, like Ira Guilford from Chrysler, who did the Twin Mill, and Larry Wood from Ford, who designed the original Bone Shaker. But right from the beginning, they were designing cars to do one thing above all, roll really, really fast on plastic tracks. Wow, you've done your research. Research? I memorized this stuff when I was six years old. One reason why Hot Wheels are so eye-catching is because of a special paint called Spectra Flame. They use a transparent lacquer applied over a polished zinc plating, which gave it a totally awesome metallic effect, just like a real car. Since then, Hot Wheels has broadened and developed its paint technique to support a variety of looks and effects. Fascinating stuff, right? Another detail was the red stripe on the tires, like the one you're driving now. They called them red line tires, and they look so cool. Red line tires are a defining characteristic of this era and are really sought after by collectors. Nice drive. Here, take the Nash Custom 1957, winner of the Legends Tour 2019. Thanks, Hayley. Let's do this again soon. Let's take this monster for a spin. Careful! Technically, that's more than 1,400 brake horsepower you've got there. As I said, Hot Wheels have always been designed to go really fast on custom track. So, what do you do with the track? Well, you make it in segments so people can build whatever they like. Then you invent a battery-powered booster to shoot cars along the straight and a speed brake to slow them down for tight turns. You can even tune how fast the booster would propel the cars. But why stop there? Loops, jump ramps, bank turns, gravity drops, trestle bridges, chicanes, crossovers, lap counters, multi-lane, side-by-side racing launchers. All fully compatible, of course. That's just good engineering. They even made an auto shop with a working dyno and a teeny tiny oil can and wrench to tune up your cars. I played with it. It was nice. So why is the track orange? It's like bright orange. Can't argue with that. As you know, nothing is more exciting than seeing cars racing side by side. 
Hot Wheels made loads of accessories for this, including launches for the start line, speedometers to clock the speed of passing cars, and finish gantries that could show which car had won. No cheating allowed. In the 70s, there were dedicated multi-lane track pieces, including the Fat Track, which was three lanes wide and had no dividers for a risky overtake. Nowadays, there's even more fun stuff to play with. You've got figure eight, multi-story garages, rubber band kickers, and even giant sharks and dinosaurs that chomp on the track. Why else do you think we've got a giant dragon right here at the park? So, why make your cars go really fast on plastic track? I give up. Why? So they go further when they jump off the end, of course. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This is going to be epic. <laughs> I'm riding along with you for this bit. We'll be talking about that one. <laughs> You're probably wondering what all this snake and mongoose talk is about, right? You take the yellow car, I'll take the blue. I'll explain along the way. You've heard of Don Prudhomme and Tom McEwen, right? They were famous NHRA drag racers in the 70s who had a friendly rivalry going on for years. Um... Don was a four-time National Hot Rod Association champ and a motorsport Hall of Famer. He was nicknamed the Snake. And Tom McEwen was another dragster who won the NHRA US Nationals. They called him the Mongoose. They were both well-established racers in their own right. As the two of them competed in the US Nationals over the years, they crossed paths numerous times, which sparked a friendly rivalry between them. Mattel proposed to make a series of toys based on the rivalry between the snake and the mongoose. The Hot Wheels sponsorship led to all kinds of drag-themed stuff. with all kinds of new lines back then. You had sets like the Rod Runner and the Big Belter, which launched cars with rubber bands. The Big Belter could even detect jump starts, which is pretty cool, right? These were a smash hit and propelled both Hot Wheels and drag racing to greater levels of fame. Mission accomplished. I have another one in mind that you would absolutely nail if you're up for it. Heavy weights were designed to go faster on gravity drops and Sizzlers had little battery-powered motors so you didn't need a launcher. And a new designer named Paul Tam started drawing six-wheel designs like six-shooter and open fire. Stop there. There were loads of other innovations like tampo printed patterns on the cars, which no one else was doing. Then you had the Hot Wheels Collector's Club Kit, where you could mail in to get either the Boss Puffs, Heavy Chevy, or King Cuda, all with open hoods, big supercharger blowers, and silver paint jobs. Oh, so cool. Wish I'd been around back then. All this talk about drag racing has given me an idea. The cars in the original Snake vs. Mongoose set were powered by rubber bands. These ones, well, aren't. 
How about you and I test him in a drag race? Mm hmm. Okay. Bring it on, Haley. Obviously let you in though. Who else am I gonna give the keys to the rip rod? Hey, you'll be doing all the driving for this one. Here, take the keys and I'll be on the radio. Fair warning, I've got loads to tell you, but I promise it'll be worth it. Right, so the 80s were known as the Blackwood era because the previous red line tyres with a red pinstripe were discontinued in 1977. Then there were hot ones with thinner axles, ultra hot, the new wheel design, real riders with actual rubber tyres, those are pretty popular. Let me think. Got crack ups with damaged panels, colour shifters that changed in water. Oh, and you know the blue car blister packs you can recognise from across the store? They started in the 80s too. Mattel bought Tyco Toys in 97, makers of the Matchbox brand of toy cars. This brought all the miniature toy cars under one big roof.
I've set you up with a rip rod for this one. Off-road series 2014, code BD00. One of the new lines Hot Wheels created was called the Treasure Hunt series. Limited production, super collectible. Obviously, we can't go into a toy store or convention floor, so I'll simulate the experience with some treasure chests. Go find that treasure! Collect them all! You know what it's like to be a proper Hot Wheels collector. Exhausting, right? Worth it, though. I've always had a soft spot for the bone shaker. It's like an antique you can drive around in. Let's go. Oh, oh, did I tell you about the Hot Wheels 50th anniversary back in 2018? No, but I have a feeling you're about to. They did a sweet black and gold series with matching livery and a whole collection of other 50th anniversary inspired cars throughout the line. They also started the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Custom car builders compete to show off their best designs. Then Hot Wheels picks the best one and makes it into a 1 to 64 scale toy. That's how we ended up with the two Jet Z, Nash Metropolitan and Custom Trans Am. Sometimes the opposite happens, where a toy car gets scaled up into a real one. Hot Wheels have made more than 20 full-scale cars and used them to break three world records with actual corkscrew jumps and double loops. <laughs> it's wild. loads of amazing designers had worked on Hot Wheels. Mark Jones, Bill Wheelman, Brendan Petuski, Fraser Campbell, I could go on and on. Between them, they made loads of creative casting signs. There were lines like the Toon, Hard Nose, Cruise, Fat Back, Torpedoes and the Drop Top series and the Realistic series if that was your jam.
Nice. Now, let's shake up that bone shaker a bit, shall we? I know we're 50 miles above Mexico, but a little Baja expertise won't go astray. The Baja Bone Shaker is a modern take on the classic bone shaker design. Hot Wheels have done heaps of cool stuff outside of model cars as well. You mean apart from the Horizon Festival? Exactly. There was an animated movie in 2003, a TV series called Hot Wheels Accelerators in 2005, and tons of video games going all the way back to an 8-bit version in 1984. Oh, those were the days. And get this. Back in 2014, they hooked up with the University of Southern California to develop pedometry, an educational curriculum to teach kids science and maths. Seriously? <laughs> I know. And there's me, stuck in a university lecture on advanced analytics with no toy cars or anything. So unfair. There's been 20,000 different designs, and at least 8 billion cars have been made. Impressive, right? But the rare cars are still worth a lot at auction. An ultra-rare prototype of the 1969 Volkswagen Beach Bomb sold for $72,000, and some collections are estimated to be worth over a million dollars. In the early 2000s, several collector conventions began to spring up around the world, where fans can meet up to buy or sell cars, show off their collections, or just talk about their hobby. Nice! Now, the Baja Bone Shaker's ground clearance is pretty good, but... Monster Truck Bone Shaker! Amazing, right? <laughs> Climb in and let's do this. I figured we could finish the documentary in style with an epic stunt run in this piece. Don't ask how we got it up here. So, what fun facts have you got on this thing? Can we do epic stunts now and do facts later, please? Scale. Okay, okay, fine. In 2018, Hot Wheels launched its Hot Wheels Monster Trucks toy line, and an exciting live event came a year later. This line has both amazing original designs and Monster Truck versions of classics like the Bone Shaker and Twin Mill. Very nice. We'll make a Hot Wheels Pro of you yet.
trust the skill chains. Bigger is better. Thanks. Here, have a Mustang. 